Tokido has to stay alive. He can't get touched. If that big boy, he does it. It's all too easy to forget about certain parts of the world. These days, it's all about NA, or EU, or Korea, or China, or Japan. At least in the West, we tend to forget about the rest of the world. The Dominican Republic earned their way to the top of the Street Fighter world. They overcame barriers, borders, and gods to earn the rest of the world's respect. But after their champion won the biggest prize Street Fighter has to offer, he didn't spend it on himself. He spent it breaking down every obstacle for his brothers and sisters back home. All the way from the Dominican Republic, he is your Capcom Cup 2017 champion! The Dominican Republic is a complicated place. It's a country fueled by tourism, and the opportunities for people who live there are limited. The average wage is under $400 a month. Getting a visa to the States can be complicated, and for most young people, the dream of esports stardom seemed unattainable for the longest time. Which meant that being the best seemed like just a dream for a guy like Mena RD. The DR scene was actually just like any other scene. There's a few players that are dedicated to it, but not like, you don't got a lot of people actually believing you can do it. Gaming in the Dominican Republic was never really gonna lead to anything resembling a career. But Mena RD and his friends stuck with fighting games. My big brother, he plays fighting games and I grew up in the same house as him. And he, he was always beating me, so I just started playing fighting games because of him. They hung out in a sort of dojo. At least, that's what they called it. It was basically a tiny room with a couple of setups. It wasn't exactly luxurious, and you had to be in the know to even show up for locals. Even the power would sometimes go out, which isn't exactly ideal for marathon training sessions. Playing back in the VR, like, electricity goes out at any random moment. Sometimes you want to play, but you can because of electricity. And then there's the fact that travel from the Dominican Republic to the rest of the world often felt impossible. DR citizens need a visa to get to the US, Canada, and Europe, not to mention vast swaths of South America, where there are plenty of Capcom Pro Tour events. The DR scene, regardless of their actual skill, were trapped. The Dominican Republic is just a great example of how much scenes out there just, they're so good, but you just don't know it because they just don't have the opportunity to travel. So when Mena RD, a 17-year-old kid from the Dominican Republic, burst onto the scene in 2017, a lot of people were surprised. So I was talking to my brother Yipes at Combo uh -huh. Breaker, and he was like, yo, Mena RD is definitely like top caliber. Yes. Like he's a region-specific player uh -huh. that you have to look out for. A lot of people don't know who he is, but Mena RD, is definitely got like oh uh, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. is gonna be that men are rd with the mini disrespect and he moves on i mean we talked about this men are rd is a guy to beat he yes, is one he of is. the creme de la creme over the course of 2017 mena built a reputation he was bringing down solid players and in premier tournaments he went from top 16 to top 12 to top 8. patience and another sneeze no hits oh, jump, 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 jump. Jump. Oh my god, Mena RD! Mena's skills got people talking, but they also got him a spot in Capcom Cup. Capcom Cup isn't as well known as, say, EVO. It doesn't have as many players, it's not as prestigious, and for some people, it's just not as important. But Capcom Cup does have the one thing that every player wants. The biggest prize in fighting games. Every year, the Capcom Cup champion takes home a quarter of a million dollars. And for Mena RD, it could make a huge difference. Going into Capcom Cup though, Mena RD was just another one of the 32. He didn't have an especially high seed and his competition looked fierce. A former EVO champion round one, a former Capcom Cup champion round two, and in round three, the legendary Daigo Umehara was waiting for him if he could make it past his first two opponents. But some people had high hopes for the Dominican upstart. And I remember when I looked at the top eight bracket on the winner's side, I thought Meno was the favorite. He got it! He got it! Meno on the last Big damage! It's not enough! Oh, what is it gonna be? Oh. He got it! Meno RD! Sensienda losers! Success for Kazunoko has been the Eagles! Oh, but again, another it's one. over! He's done it! Meno RD! Let's take it, Casanova, into the loser's bracket. 
cages. Anti air wasn't there. Oh, Mena! He takes it up and he gets the stun. Mena RD, one hit. There it is. Capcom Cup Top 8. He will be playing on Sunday at the PlayStation Experience. Mena brought down every single opponent in his way, earning his spot in the top three and guaranteeing himself a pretty nice chunk of the prize pool. But a lot of people thought his run was basically over because his next opponent was someone no one could stop. Very smart from Tokido. Just doesn't want to deal with that situation. Oh, he goes in and goes the outside. Goes low and Tokido has done it. He's got the grand finals. Such a close match. It was all the way down to that last second. Mena could have still taken it. Oh boy, you see it on Mena's face. Mena made it close, but he couldn't quite topple Tokido. So he went down to losers, crushed Nemo, and earned another shot at the king. That time reacting to the fireball, getting the damage. Here comes Benard. Wasn't enough. Oh boy, and Tokido. Oh, scary man. Well, you jumped. You jumped. And now, oh, and it switched sides too. Very fortunate for Tokido. Gets him in the corner. He's so scary. Menard, he knows it. Just sneeze him away. Get away. Oh, and the jam. And Menard comes back and ties it up one to one with a great clutch comeback. No, here we go. Mena RD with the opportunity. He's gonna get the headbutt. And he's gonna spend the critical eye right away. Okay. He wants to get Tokido in a nervous situation where the next hit could potentially kill him. And he bakes it out! Is that it's gonna be big damage! Is it enough? Not quite! Tokido. Oh my god! He jabbed him out of that! But another jab from Mena RD! He stays alive! He's still in it! We're not done yet! Oh boy, another one for the stun. Yes, it's not gonna do it quite yet, but we are close here. Tokido needs something big to stay alive. And it's not gonna do it! Menardi has reset the bracket! He has reset the bracket! Oh, it's not over. It's not over, but it's closer than it was before. Back and forth. Tokido just blocked it out. Oh, this Almost so enough. much damage. It's enough! Oh, boy! One hit in the critical art! Is it enough? Not no! Right. Birdie the big boy stays alive. He's got the EX song for sure. The trigger's there. He went over it, but it was too far! He just missed it! Amazing to see Tokido of all people miss that range. A little bit of pressure. A man throw! Maybe a lot of pressure. A couple more. Oh boy! One more! He's gonna do it! One more! Do it. One more. No, not quite! Mena is on the verge of doing it! Tokido has to stay alive, he can't get touched! If that big boy, yeah. he goes in! There it is, Menarchy! He's the Capcom Cup 2017 champion! After resetting the bracket, Mena RD brought down Tokido in one of the biggest upsets in fighting game history. A rookie player with barely a year of tournament experience from a country that no one had really ever heard of, and he beat one of the greatest fighting game players of all time. But Mena RD didn't really spend his prize money on some of the sillier things he could have bought. He invested his winnings right back into the Dominican Republic FGC. There was like a, a, a dojo, what we call it, a club, so that you can play, and I helped and put a lot of money into it to make it better. We don't pay anymore over there. We have AC, we have big screen to watch videos, a lot of um, setups. But Mena's real efforts began with the Santo Domingo Tigers. First thing is I started um, a team, and I started sending all the players, you know, get the players to the USA and have them organize, you know, make them grind as a normal team. Then he built a local Street Fighter circuit, which sent one champion to EVO 2018, all expenses paid. And not only that, but Mena RD and all the other Dominican players' continued success makes it a lot easier for players from the Dominican Republic to travel now. We now have proof that we're coming here to play and show to the embassy. We're like, yeah, we travel here, we travel here. Um, he's coming with us. And uh, flight money, uh, we get support from different companies. I, I put a lot of money into my scene so all of them could travel and have a place to practice in. So it's easier now. It's not easy, but easy. And as DR players started to travel more and more, they became known for their boisterous support of their fellow countrymen. While some people complain, it was hard to fault the DR players for just being excited for one another. Well, we have a very uh, strong national pride, so it's in all the sports that Dominicans are at. We're just like that. We, we love our country and we love being the best as a country, playing as a team. Mena also used the money to make Game Over, the Dominican major. Don't get 
It was a truly international event that attracted players from all over the world. Something that was moving for many in the FGC. Listen, man, the love is great. Like I said before, man, I haven't been here since I was 11, so it's real emotional for me that a lot of people showing that love to me. So just to see all that love and that embracement for people that actually support me, even though people that sometimes don't even understand the language that I'm speaking, which is English, back at home, they just know and they feel that love. Mena built a better dojo, one where the ceilings didn't leak and the power didn't randomly go out. And his success brought more people out to the locals because, well, they wanted to try to bring him down. Everybody were looking up to a new standard, and they were, they were like, yeah, so this guy, you know, one of us is a world champ, so we can all be world champs now. <laughs> and they started training a lot. They were like, yeah, we raised this kid, you know, because I started when I was young over there, and they were like, we saw him grow up. There's no way he's gonna be the only one to do it, so we're gonna follow his steps. He built a foundation for players from the DR to travel and dominate players all over the world. And in turn, they did. Sweet punish, no, too far. Drill, had the counter hit, didn't convert, Ooh. locked down. Cover goes oh, in. Oh, this is gonna oh, hurt. Oh, this is big danger. Still alive, He's still, still alive. Another trigger. Oh, oh come on, come on. He's made it to top eight at EVO 2018. The Dominican Republic invades the stage, look at these incredible scenes. The DRFGC wasn't just a scene that no one was paying attention to. It was a scene that didn't really have much of a shot at international success without the infrastructure that Mena RD's win provided. His decision to build up the community that made him was selfless, but it also allowed them all to thrive. Now we are a force to be reckoned with, you know? You talk about good fighting and players, so you have to talk about the DR. Mena RD's win at Capcom Cup represented far more than just a win for himself. It was a win for an entire country, a nation full of talent worth taking seriously. His win threw the Dominican FGC into the spotlight, but his generosity brought them to the world. You need something to believe in in life, and this is what I believe in. I believe in my country and in my community.